the desert sands will slowly expand their frontiers. Fifteen years ago, 20 African nations in the Sahel region joined hands to halt the expanding Sahara Desert. But how far have they succeeded? The Sahara is just an endless mass of sand, with scorching sun, a place unfit for animal and human existence. However, according to findings, many interesting facts about the desert are unknown. What exactly is hidden under the sands of the Sahara? For how long has this mystery been under the earth? To get answers to these questions, you should watch this video to the end. The Sahara is one of the world's largest hot deserts and one of the third largest deserts, surpassed by Antarctica and the Northern Arctic. It covers about 9.2 million square kilometers, which is almost the same size as the entirety of China. It stretches into about 10 African countries – Chad, Niger, Egypt, Libya, Mali, Tunisia, Mauritania, Morocco, Algeria, and Sudan – and covers one-third of the continent. Imagine that massive expanse of land. Most of the Sahara is located in North Africa, bordered by the Red Sea, the Mediterranean, the Atlantic Ocean, and the Sahel. Sahara is divided into different regions, which include the Libya Desert, the Air Mountains, the Tibesti Mountains, the Western Sahara, the Tenere Desert, and the Ahaga Mountains. The desert divides the continent into North and Sub-Saharan Africa, and you won't believe it claims about 10 kilometers of land from surrounding regions yearly. The desert keeps enlarging itself. According to popular opinion, the desert is only made up of cacti, dunes with no fauna and flora. This is wrong, because just about 20% of the desert is covered by sand. Most of the desert has rocky plateaus and 4,000 species of animals, such as jackals, dune cats, gerbils, mongooses, and antelopes. Many of these animals are only active at night due to the sun's intensity. The average temperature in the Sahara is 30 degrees centigrade receiving less than one inch of rainfall yearly. Another interesting fact about the desert is that the temperature drops to about minus six degrees centigrade, and snowfall is experienced in nearby regions. The major topographical characteristics of the desert include large oasis depressions, rocky plateaus, sand sheets, and sand seas. Mount Kusi, an extinct volcano located in the Tibesti Mountains in Chad, is the highest point in the Sahara. It has a height of 11,204 feet. The lowest point is the Katara Depression in northwestern Egypt, about 436 feet below sea level. Dunes and sand sheets cover up to 25% of the Sahara. The most common are the tide dunes, which form the parabolic blowout dunes, crescent-shaped barkans, transverse dunes, and others. Many of the dunes are about 500 feet in height. Dunes are one of the most common features of the desert. It can reach about 600 feet in height, covering about 25% of the total desert. The Shigaga dunes are yet to be touched because they're hard to reach. Some of these dunes are about 300 meters. Sparse rainfall and wind-shaped dunes, salt flats, sand seas, gravel plains, dune fields, and other desert structures. They are features that were formed gradually due to climatic and environmental factors. Other unusual landforms include the rich ash structure in Mauritania, the Air Mountains, Ahaga Mountains, the Saharan Atlas, and the red and sea hills formed by volcanic eruptions. An interesting quality associated with desert sands is their ability to make booming sounds with a music-like quality. Many assumptions have been made, yet the mystery behind this effect remains unknown. Before now, so many interesting sites have been seen in the desert, but do they carry as much significance as the new discovery? Mirages often occur in the desert. About 150,000 mirages have been observed, all traced out on a map. It sounds so interesting. The desert has sparse rainfall, and the only river that runs through its borders is the Nile. Despite this, travelers still find ponds of water and oases in the desert formed through mirages. A mirage is a visual illusion resembling a water sheet in the Sahara. It's caused when heated air bends or refracts light from the sky, the total internal reflection of light. This phenomenon is common in deserts. It happens when light moves across two regions of varying temperatures. 
The sun heats the desert sand, and the sand heats the air above. The air is hot near the sand and begins to cool as it rises. Light rays refract toward the ground, forming water-like colors and creating a fake desert oasis. The heated air only bends light rays, and the sky is reflected. Mirages are just simple occurrences of nature. We experience them not only in deserts, but also on hot roads and in hot regions. Often, small ponds of water might appear beside trees. There are two types of mirages, inferior and superior. Instead of hallucination, a mirage can be captured with a camera, showing that they are real. They're not just figments of imagination. Inferior mirages are observed in hotter regions, while superior mirages occur in cold regions worldwide. According to scientists, mirages also occur at night. Mirages are not just the only interesting feature of the Sahara Desert. A structure known as the Blue Eye of the Sahara, or Rechat structure, has caught the interest of scientists. This geological formation is located in the western region of the Sahara, and it covers about 40 kilometers in Mauritania. This formation was first photographed by Gemini astronauts, who in the 1960s used the structure to oversee the progress of the opening strings. With time, the Landsat satellite captured other images that carry information about the formation's height, size, and degree. This was a great breakthrough. The ring structure has a diameter of 50 kilometers and has existed for about 100 million years. This formation has been used as a direct point for astronauts because it can be seen from orbit in a desert with no other remarkable landmarks. Some geologists have claimed that this structure was formed from a prolonged period of erosion. Others claim it's a blow crater formed when an object from space hit the region. But various studies have proven that the structure has existed since the beginning of the world. It is an elliptical dome that's been eroded in 40-kilometer diameter. Its inner region is formed by a siliceous breeder that covers 30 kilometers in diameter. These unique features have proven most of the theories wrong. The interior of the Rechat structure consists of different varieties of intrusive and extrusive igneous rocks. This includes carbonatites, gabbros, kimberlites, and rhyolitic volcanic rocks. The rhyolitic rocks comprise lava flows and tophaceous rocks hydrothermally altered, the eroded remains of two Mars. Aeromagnetic data and field mapping have proven that the gabbroic rocks form two concentric ring dikes. The inner ring dike is located 3 kilometers from the center and about 20 meters in width. The second ring dike in the outer region lies 7 to 8 kilometers from the center and is about 50 meters wide. One can only wonder at the uniqueness of this structure. Inside the Rejan structure, up to 32 sills and carbonate dikes have been found. The dikes are large carbonate-lacking vesicles and are 300 meters long, usually 1 to 4 meters wide. They were said to have cooled about 94 to 104 million years ago. At the northern region of the Rechat are various sills and a kimberlitic plug. This plug is about 99 million years of age. These rocks have been recorded to have large alkaline igneous intrusions under the Rechat structure. Long ago, the entire landscape around the eye was hoisted due to a volcanic eruption beneath the Earth's surface. This landscape has not always been a desert. It used to be a temperate region that experienced abundant rainfall. After the eruption, erosion of various forms occurred in areas surrounding the rock, and it descended into itself, creating the eye. Different igneous rocks such as carbonatites, kimberlite, black basalts, and rhyolites have been found in this area. Another interesting structure in the Sahara is the peak of Emi Kusi, the highest point in the desert. Emi means mountain in the Tibesti language. This structure, which covers about 37 by 80 miles, is a shield volcano found in northern Chad, close to the southeastern region of the Tibesti range. It's 11,204 feet above sea level and has three volcanic craters formed by fierce eruptions. Shield volcanoes are the biggest volcanoes in the world. After the eruption, they do not solidify to form high mountains with peaks characterized by composite volcanoes. Rather, 
they have a broad shape with slopes and are in the form of a warrior's shield faced down. With these interesting features, a trip to the Sahara would be well worth it. These kinds of volcanoes are not formed from explosive volcanic eruptions. It's formed as a result of the solidification of free-flowing magma. These volcanoes occupy a lot of space because their lava often travels long distances before solidification due to their low viscosity. They contain majorly basaltic and sometimes andesitic lava flows or both. They're formed by continuous eruptions, sometimes over a million years. Currently, there are hot springs and fumarolic activity at the site. During its first eruption, it was said that the volcano erupted tracheandesites and tracheites, which were formed as basaltic lapilli and ignimbrites. The constituents of the second stage were phonolytic lava domes, basaltic lava flows, ignimbrites, trachytic, grey or green, and ignimbrites. The third stage contained breccia, cohort ignimbrite, and tuffs. According to cloud cover data, Emikusi experiences 80 to 120 millimeters of precipitation annually. The region used to get more rainfall in years past. Montane vegetation in the region, such as Artemisia ephedra steppes, takes up a large portion of the caldera floor. The flow of lava during an eruption makes it easier for some particular vegetation to grow, which can be used as pastures. Some of these vegetation are Decrossifala, Helichrysum, Erodium, Irogrostis, Liverworts, Ferns, and Oldenlandia. The woodrush also predominates in this region. The desert is characterized by harsh conditions. Despite this, close to 2 million people still live there. The Turex and Berbers have found a home in the desert. How do they survive? It was recorded that in ancient times, merchants traveled through the desert in large populations. According to Arab historians, merchants once traveled with up to 12,000 camels. To know a lot about this desert, it's important to visit its heart, but many of its treasures have been covered up by dunes. Does the evidence of human life in the desert some years ago explain the new discovery under the desert sand? During an exploration of oil, water was discovered in the Sahara in the 1950s. The exploration took place in the Al Kufra area in the southeastern region of Libya. It was reported that this was part of the Nubian sandstone aquifer system. It's a large reservoir of fossil water, around 10,000 to 1 million years old. Water had settled into the sandstone before the region stopped being temperate at the end of the Ice Age. The great man made river, GMR, whose source is the aquifers, is often called the largest irrigation system in the world and it's been declared by the Libyan government as the eighth wonder of the world. It consists of a large network of aqueducts and underground pipelines that carry water to Libyan citizens and industries from the ancient aquifers deep in the desert floor. It generates about 70% of the fresh water used in Libya. This project has supported individuals and businesses since it was launched in 1991. The GMR has five phases, generating about 6.5 million cubic meters of water daily. This consists of about 2,500 miles of pipeline and 13,000 wells over 500 meters deep. It was placed in the Guinness Book of Records as the largest irrigation project in the world. It's a big project and it deserves recognition. It's hard to believe that 8,000 years ago, the Sahara was a temperate region with lush vegetation. In the desert, there used to be a lake called Mega Chad, covering 390,000 square kilometers that was discovered with a 3D satellite image. Various studies claim that the state of the desert today is a result of human activities. They brought in animals that fed and trampled on the vegetation, exposing it to the sun's heat. Scientists have attributed the current condition of the desert to the changes in Earth's orbit, which occur every 20,000 years. There used to be human settlements in the green of the Sahara. Many won't believe this. Engraved and painted rocks dating back to 10,000 years ago have been discovered in the center of the Sahara. The history of the Sahara can be traced to the Mesozoic era when this region was called Tethys, bursting with giant whales, snakes, dinosaurs, and turtles. The remains of the creatures have been discovered by archaeologists. 
in the middle of the Sahara called the Valley of the Whales, one of the largest dinosaurs in the world has been found. This proves that scientists are right about life in the desert years ago. If you enjoyed this video, you should like it and share it with people around you. Remember to subscribe to get more updates from this channel.